Good morning, uh, our audience, and thank you very much for joining us today. We are so, so, so happy to have you on board. Uh, as we begin uh, today's uh, event, um, uh, which uh, uh, you have joined and uh, which we believe will be quite interesting for all of us, uh, I think we begin with, uh, with a word of prayer and uh, like uh, purity to pray for us. Uh, good morning. Let us believe and pray. Uh, we thank you, dear Father, for the gift of this one. of us, because of bringing us, gathering us here together, the rightful path. Pray that even as we start this event, that is going to be of uh, benefit to the attendees. It's going to inspire them and it's even going to uh, open their eyes more. Even it's going to be more educational and uh, we are going to have a successful event. I'm going to pray that your Holy Spirit is going to guide us through the session and at the end of it, we are going to thank you and to honor your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Purity. Thank you for opening with uh, the word of prayer. And uh, as we, we begin, uh, we our program today, I think we have um, the opening remarks. We will have uh, selling properties during pandemic. We'll have a key topic for today, uh, why circles are a solution of affordable housing and why Tanki is the housing solution for cooperative societies. We'll have a Q&A at about 12.10, uh, all the way to the end, and then we'll close with a uh, closing prayer at the end of our session. So I hope uh, you are going to enjoy and welcome all. Allow me to go straight to the opening remarks. Uh, let us let me introduce you to Cooperative Bank for the ones who have joined, and uh, we have six subsidiaries. Of the six subsidiaries, we have the Cop Bank, the Kingdom Securities, Cop Bank of South Sudan, Cop Consultancy, Kingdom Bank, and the Cop Trust Investments. They all are anchored, and in terms of the business units we have, with a corporate and government institutional banking, we have retail business banking and cooperatives division. You'll be happy to know that Cooperative Bank is the third biggest bank in Kenya with an asset base of 457, profitability of 20.7 billion, a share capital of 65 billion, and a customer base of 7.1 million. Currently, Combank has a network of 151 branches in, uh, in, in the country and uh, 11,000 agents across the country. Our mortgage book is the third biggest with about 41 billion uh, achieved in the last uh, nine years and, uh, and holding uh, a number of the cooperatives together. Cooperative Bank has about 1,150 circles and uh, who have about 15 million customers. Our, our mission is to continue serving our customers through the cooperatives to help them be able to build their own houses, to be able to have more and more and better financial services. The topics that we are going to handle today uh, are, 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 are precursor of what happened last week. And last week we were able to, to launch our property hub. And maybe just to give a highlight is just to show a video of uh, how our event was last week, uh, even as we go to give the opening remarks. So please, please uh, have a view of the video. Thank you. The Good Home Mortgage Property Hub is officially open.
Thank you very much. And uh, that's how it was on Friday when we were able to open our property hub, which uh, forms a central point of delivery for our agenda for today. Around me just to give an overview in terms of the opening remarks and uh, start that uh, sale of properties has uh, changed in the market and it has changed because the market has demanded so, especially with uh, the changes we've had, the, the pandemic we've had for the last uh, seven, eight months. And uh, e-selling of properties has taken a front seat. And I think uh, as you go along and as you reason through, you'll hear more from Patrick who has um, that uh, mandate from the bank in terms of driving. How do we sell properties during this time? And virtual tours, e-selling and such things are becoming more and more prevalent. And there is more that you're going to hear as we continue our symposium for this week, which we started on Friday. I think the key thing that nobody can avoid now is affordable housing. Affordable housing talk is all over. And we'll be looking forward for the two uh, topics that we'll be handling today. And they are all directed to our key customer, who are the, 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 the cooperative societies, of course. And uh, generally, is how to afford uh, houses. In Kenya, and for many years, we've had that shortfall in terms of the houses that are produced and the houses that are in demand. And I guess the move by the government to try and articulate the agenda better, drive resources to that end, be a facilitator, has come in handy. And I think we can see a more and more move of private investments, you can see uh, private capital coming into this area. And in conjunction with the government, who are very good in terms of putting uh, infrastructure and the rest, we believe at least we are addressing the issue of affordable housing. I think this cannot be said until now we start seeing how does it play, how do the cooperatives take advantage, and basically how does the private sector come into play. I'm sure at hand you'll be very ready to reason to why circles are the solution for affordable housing and why tanke is a solution for cooperative societies and both the presenters are quite ready to take you through that. I think the last part of it is that the innovativeness that is required around the contractors and the developers. A traditional approach in the solutioning for housing might not be very successful now, not because it is not good, but because there are demands that are emerging. I think one of the key things that is emerging right now is that uh, you must have a solution that looks end to end. Because if you don't look end to end, chances are that you get exposed and your margins are very thin. It's worthwhile to note that uh, circles, even as of today, they have started launching schemes of affordable houses. And the issue here is that the margins are very thin. So if you do not have very flexible and agile systems, then you'll find yourself with a challenge. The other thing is the sales. Sales there before, they were being driven by a way of you build the houses, then you sell the houses. I think this time that does not seem to work. And what everybody is calling for is you sell the houses, and then after you sell the houses, that's when you build. And that's where the circles come in very handy. I think the last point in here in my opening remarks is I think is a, a way of digital. I think everything has gone digital. And I think the only things that uh, we can be able now to continue seeing, if cash is going digital, then rent is one of the things that needs to go digital. And when that happens now, I think we'll be addressing more of the kind of issues that we have around affordable housing, the sale of houses, and the way the process deliverer, contractors and developers are going to engage in this. At this point in time, I think uh, allow me to, to, to continue and um, introduce uh, so that you're able to see precisely how the selling would happen. And uh, I'll, 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 I want to introduce uh, Patrick. And as Patrick comes in, maybe allow me to, to, to settle him with a, with a question. And I think the, the, the question is, can I, can I build my house in my rural area? And would I get a mortgage? Can I build my house in the rural area and can I get a mortgage? So, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Mashari will take us through the next session. Thank you very much.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Chris, uh, for the nice introduction. And uh, to start us off, I will respond to the question you've asked, which is something that has come across in various forums with different customers seeking to know whether that is actually a possibility. And uh, the differentiator here would be what is this rural property we are talking about? Because the dynamics in this country is that we have different areas falling uh, under different jurisdictions and calling for us to be very careful when we are looking at the different properties that we are taking as collateral for a loan. So the properties that the bank would consider as collateral for a loan are properties that fall within what we initially would refer to as municipalities or urban areas uh, in today's uh, setting. You're looking at a property that is titled that is a property that has a title deed as proof of ownership and a property uh, that is below an acre looking at a mortgage uh, for, I mean, if you're looking to develop or to buy a property. So it has to meet that criteria. It has to be within a township, what was initially referred to as a municipality, and it has to have a title deed or a certificate of lease as proof of ownership. Uh, I hope that answers the question. But again, before I commence, I want to request our viewers, our listeners, to continue asking questions. You can leave your comments, you can leave your, your chats, and we will be uh, ready to respond to the same. We will respond to this uh, in due course. As introduced earlier, my name is Patrick Masharia uh, in, in the mortgage uh, department also. And uh, this morning, I'll be taking us through some of the trends we've seen in the property space. Uh, as introduced by Chris, a lot has changed in the recent uh, few months, over the recent few months, and the key thing I would want to talk about is the disruption which has been occasioned by the pandemic. Uh, we've seen people adopt new way of doing things because um, as a way of trying to curb the, the spread of the, can the pandemic, uh, we've seen people adopt new way of doing things, and you'll hear social distancing and physical distancing as the norm today. And as we adopt the new normal, you realize that this comes at a cost because it means we have to change the way we've been doing things. Uh, as opposed to the physical meetings we used to have initially, we are now seeing online meetings uh, taking center stage, such as what we are having today. And, and consequently, this has also brought in a cost in the way we've been operating. Because for you to hold such forums, it means we have to bring on board additional gadgets, additional softwares, programs, and all that. And we are looking at this as an additional cost, um, particularly to businesses um, as opposed to how it was before. Now, in the process, uh, we're also seeing players in the real estate space uh, take on new platforms and uh, new ways of marketing and selling properties because we've seen people adopt uh, e-marketing. We've also seen people take on other platforms like property portals. We are seeing virtual tours also taking a center stage because as opposed to how people used to sell properties initially, where we would take a customer to the site to actually get a better appreciation of the property, we are now seeing sellers and marketers ad adopting uh, virtual platforms to sell and market their properties. We're also seeing uh, uh, real estate players in the rental space also adopt digital rental collection and subsequently we believe that this will result to efficient management of properties. Now on the demand side, on the market demand side, we're also seeing an increasing demand, demand for housing, particularly in the affordable housing space and also some demand in standalone units and this is where the circles are playing a key role because these are conduits for the players to offer the affordable housing solutions. We'll also, as we'll be hearing in other presentations uh, on issues around flexible financial solutions for, uh, to landlords, particularly in a bid to retain efficiency and effectiveness in the real estate, uh, in the real estate space. Now, some of the properties uh, that we are seeing being offered uh, fall under different categories. And I think, uh, for the sake of the players, or rather the speakers will be coming uh, in also later, we'll be looking at properties that fall within the residential space. And these are properties in areas such as Ngong Road, Mombasa Road, Limuru Road, Kitengela and Gong, amongst others. We also have people playing in the commercial properties space. And these are properties that include offices, residential blocks, serviced apartments, 
And another interesting trend is what we are seeing in the uptake of undeveloped land. We are looking at plots in areas like Kajiado, Nanyuki, Kiambu, Nakuru, and other major towns in the country. Now, what are some of these properties that we are looking at? Now, we have apartments. Uh, we have apartments in different areas. We have apartments in uh, Ngong. We have apartments uh, on Mombasa Road. We have apartments in Limuru Road, or Limuru Road, rather. We also have apartments in Sabaki area, falling within that space. And these are properties that are selling from 1.15 million all the way to 9 million shillings. We also have other properties. Uh, we also have other properties uh, along Gong Road. We have properties along Mombasa Road in Gong Town and also on We also have properties, standalone units in Kitengela. We're also looking at standalone units in other areas uh, like uh, Athi River. We're also looking at units in uh, Kitengela and Gong and other areas. Now, other properties that fall within these categories include land, undeveloped land, where we have plots in areas like Kitengela, uh, Ongata, Rongai, Fika, and other major towns. And these are plots which are affordable because they range from 1 million all the way to 5.5 million shillings. Now, other properties that we would want to shed more light would be like what is currently block of apartments in uh, Ruaka, approximately 200 meters off Ngong Road. And this property entails two and three bedroom duplex apartments, which have been done complete with fitted kitchens, spacious lounge, laundry area, while the external amenities include perimeter walling, carbro paved parking, adequate water storage facilities, amongst others. The two bedroom apartments are currently selling for 9 million with potential to earn 45,000, while the three bedroom duplex, duplex apartments are selling for 13 million with potential rent of 60,000 a month. We also have other projects uh, like what is currently playing. This is, this is rest. Uh, of Ngong Road, approximately 400 meters from Ngong Road. And this entails studio apartments, one and two bedroom apartments also. This has been done complete with a swimming pool, children's play area, large central garden, a, co a commercial area, a kindergarten, ample parking with tarmac driveways, borehole and ample water storage facilities. This development is ready for occupation. And the studio apartments, which measure 25 square meters, are currently selling for 3.5 million, with an indicative monthly rent of 25,000 a month. The standard one-bedroom apartment, which measures 37 square meters, is currently selling for 4.8 million, with an indicative monthly rent of 35,000 shillings a month. The deluxe one bedroom apartment, which measures 40 square meters, is currently selling for 5 million shillings with indicative monthly rent of 38,000 shillings a month. While the two bedroom apartment, which measures 72 square meters, is currently selling for 8 million shillings with potential to earn 45,000 shillings a month in rent.
So ladies and gentlemen, I'll once again thank you for tuning in and for listening in. And uh, based on the agenda for the day, our next speaker will be taking us through uh, the topic on why circles are the solution uh, for ad affordable housing. And today's speaker to take us through that topic will be none other than Alex Monty. Now, Alex Monty, even as you take us through what you have for us today, we'll want to ask you a question in line with what you're going to discuss. And uh, we'd want you to advise us on the current trends in the circle space in Kenya. What are we experiencing in that space today? Alex, welcome, and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you, Patrick, uh, for the introduction. Welcome, all our listeners. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us. I would want to start by answering your question on uh, what are the current trends in terms of uh, the cooperative sector in Kenya. Uh, the cooperative sector in Kenya has been growing over time and uh, since independence and uh, up to today, uh, up to actually this year, we've registered a total of uh, 24,000 cooperative societies. I'm not saying that all of them are active, but uh, we, it is estimated, it is, we are estimating that 15,000 of them are active and uh, share in between them 15 million members. So uh, that's where we are at uh, the cooperative sector and the cooperative sector in Kenya is divided in several uh, uh, clusters. We have the housing cooperatives, we have the circle subsector, uh, we have the we also have the diaspora. A circle that is coming very strongly and we have the community based uh, include uh, community based including uh, women and youth and special interest groups including churches and uh, all the rest so th that's a that's a current trend of uh, cooperatives in terms of uh, uh, savings uh, it is estimated that uh, today uh, the Kenyan cooperative sector has saved close to 1.2 uh, trillion Kenya shillings uh, and it has given loans to its members averaging uh, uh, over 700 billion uh, up to today. In terms of projects undertaken by the cooperative sector, we, uh, we, uh, we have uh, witnessed projects since uh, the cooperative sector started growing in Kenya of over 200 billion in terms of land, offices, uh, that's a cost of construction, of, of offices, housing, and uh, uh, and even um, uh, projects, income generating projects that uh, the cooperative sectors, sector has undertaken. In terms of uh, ranking, you know, across the world, uh, cooperative societies have been uh, very instrumental in terms of uh, providing affordable housing uh, to members and to the population across the world. We have seen it in Latin America, uh, India, uh, Malaysia, East, East, East Europe, Malawi, uh, closer, closer home, even in Tanzania and Uganda, most of the housing uh, housing uh, solutions are offered by the cooperative sector. And uh, we are seeing this even here in Kenya to be one of the solutions for affordable housing because uh, cooperative societies are able to mobilize funds very quickly from members uh, who are generating income either through employment, uh, through uh, SME, uh, people who are working in different fields across uh, the country, across the economy, they are able to come together and uh, uh, mobilize resources and move forward in terms of uh, uh, strengthening and improving their, li their, their livelihoods. So, so we are also, uh, in Kenya, we are also, uh, the cooperative movement is, uh, is the largest in Africa and number seven in the world. So I'll just uh, briefly define for you what is a cooperative society, just to, uh, to try and understand where is this uh, power of coming together, uh, where is it uh, coming from? So in terms of uh, the way a cooperative society is defined, you need to understand that it is an autonomous association, it depends uh, of association by persons who have come together for reality, uh, for a common economic social and cultural needs. You need to underline the word economic. It's because of economic that they come together so that they can empower each other. It's because of social, 
so that they can work together. And it's also because of culture. And that's where now the issues of housing and uh, other development items come in. Properties are based on uh, several principles uh, and uh, the values. One of the values is self-help. Another one is self-responsibility, democracy, equality and equity and solidarity. Unless those uh, values uh, are in inborn in the cooperative society, the cooperative society will be will not will struggle. And uh, traditionally, uh, then these have come to be the commonly accepted values and also ethical values, which include honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for others. Through that, then it becomes very easy to bring this uh, uh, community of people together to uh, for a common goal and a common mission and uh, in this in this sense this will be how do we uh, use them to uh, afford uh, what we call affordable housing to their members in terms of principles there are seven internationally accepted principles these ones were passed by the international cooperative alliance we have uh, for Yundali and open membership democratic member control economic participation of members autonomy and independence, education, training and information, cooperation among cooperatives and concern for the community. If you move to India today and ask them about the cooperative principles, they'll give you those seven. So everybody knows about those seven and that is where we draw our strength from as a cooperative movement. So we can proceed. In terms of uh, fitting in the gap for the affordable housing, and areas where we would want to partner with cooperatives across the country is one of them is the wholesale mortgage. As a bank, we will be able to uh, support the cooperatives in, 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 in their drive to achieve their mission of, uh, of affordable housing for their members. Then we will be able to, uh, to offer them what we call wholesale mortgage. This is uh, money we give them so that they can lend to their members so that their members can acquire mortgages either from their circles. Uh, they can also buy land. Uh, they, they can also generate uh, income from rentals. It, it's also uh, able to finance infrastructure on land and also to buy or construct houses within a structured project or turnkey project. This is uh, uh, where we come very strongly to support the cooperatives uh, so that they can achieve the, their objective. In terms of, uh, in terms of uh, more partnership, we also work very closely with them uh, where the society now wants to uh, facilitate the home ownership of the members. So we work very closely with the cooperatives uh, societies in Kenya uh, so that uh, they can be able to uh, empower their members. We, 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 they, they usually have a suitable land uh, where they have sub subdivided and members wish to develop houses. We work out and look at areas where we can support them uh, in terms of uh, how do they construct. They already have a land, but uh, they need some funding to uh, construct. We also support them in terms of uh, professionals and uh, uh, technical support. Acquisition where a cooperative society needs to acquire properties which are already constructed, we come in handy and support them uh, in acquisition of completed units uh, of land, uh, units, completed units, or even land. We really finance a lot of land uh, purchases across the across the country. Whatever the circle is uh, is happy with, we are able to. Uh, go in there, uh, look at the land, support them in terms of uh, authenticating the land and also purchasing it on their behalf. And then uh, we make arrangements or now they will be able to pay uh, slowly. We also work very closely with the uh, property societies in Kenya uh, in supporting them to roll out their products. Especially one of the things we do is uh, is now the property hub we are launching today, where we come in and uh, societies we have supported 
will be able to work with them very closely and support, uh, give them mortgage products to their members. So uh, a, pro a society as a project, uh, that project needs their members to, to get some mortgages so that they can uh, buy or purchase the houses. Then we come in, in, in Andy and give them what we call uh, agency or even ed, end, end user financing. Uh, and this is part of uh, our, our growth strategy, whereby we want to partner with USACOS more closely. In terms of uh, project finance, some cooperative societies have, uh, have, have uh, huge chunks of land and they would want to develop those chunks of land uh, for their members or even to sell or to make money. Uh, they, they, they want to do shopping malls, they want to do hotels, whatever they want to do, uh, we are able to offer them what we call project finance. Project finance has happened uh, in this country for so many projects uh, from Mulolongo, we have uh, several Stima Village, we have uh, Bluebell uh, Park. All those are, uh, are projects we are financing and we are ready to finance more and support and even offer, offer more technical support to the cooperative society. I, I, I actually forgot to mention that uh, the bank Cooperative bank is 65% owned by cooperative societies, and it is our role. We feel like it is our moral obligation to support the cooperative movement, and uh, we want them to participate fully in this affordable housing space that has come in. We also offer what we call tanki, uh, tanki. Um, Yes, these are building solutions uh, targeting uh, gated communities uh, whereby we support uh, a consortium comes together and we are there to support until uh, the cooperative society acquires a ready product. So we have different and many areas of supporting uh, the cooperative society and uh, as a bank and uh, as we launch this uh, property hub, we want to uh, ask our, uh, our our members to come and uh, let's have a discussion. Let's see areas of participation, areas of partnership, which we can be able to support you uh, fully. Thank you very much for listening. I'm much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex, for that insightful topic for taking us through the reason why circles are the solution for affordable housing. I think based on uh, the topics we have uh, we have for the day, uh, the next topic tied to what Alex has taken, through, taken us through should make for a very interesting discussion even as we continue. And uh, in line with the topic for, with the next topic, uh, we will be hearing on why Tanki is the housing solution for cooperative societies. And I think this will be a build up to what Alex has taken us through. We want to see how we can leverage on such relationships to afford the society members and other members at large uh, an opportunity to own housing. And our next speaker is none other than Colm Halley. Colm Halley will be taking us through that topic, but even as he settles down, we want to, to ask you a question around uh, your area of profession. And basically we'd want you to take us through the concept of tanki. What is the concept of tanki in the real estate space? Thank you, Colm, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, before I start and before I answer your question, I'd just like to congratulate Chris and Patrick and everyone involved. I think as we learn to uh, deal with the new normal and the new way of doing business, um, this is a fantastic um, uh, hub for us all to engage with each other on, on the subject of affordable housing. So congratulations to everyone. And I can also share all our attendees. Um, yes, yeah, very good question, Patrick. I mean, the, the, what a turnkey development essentially is, is from the uh, green plot of land to here are the keys to turn the door to open your house. It's everything from start to finish. 
is included in turnkey development. And I think my presentation will um, illuminate the subject a bit further. So let's let further ado, let's go to the presentation. Okay, while we're waiting for the slides, let me just introduce uh, 14 Trees. Um, 14 Trees is a joint venture between Lafarge Wholesome, uh, Lafarge Wholesome, of course, owned Bamburi Cement here in Kenya, and one of the world's largest building material suppliers in the world, and the CDC Group. The CDC Group is the investment arm of Department for International Development of the UK government, and um, the only shareholder for CDC is the UK government. Uh, we were established to accelerate the uh, development of affordable housing across sub Saharan Africa. Um, I'm not sure the slides aren't coming up. Okay, so from memory, I'll, I'll go through my slides. Um, 14 trees is in. Uh, three countries predominantly, although we operate in other countries in Africa. We uh, were established in 2016 in uh, Malawi. Um, in Malawi and in Zimbabwe, we have a, um, a 3D construction project where we work on housing and schools to try and further decrease the cost of construction units in Africa. In uh, Malawi also, we have, um, let me back a couple of slides, please, gentlemen. In Malawi also we have uh, Durabrick, which is in Malawi, we are the largest uh, manufacturer of soil stabilized bricks in sub-Saharan Africa. And um, I'm sure many of you are um, familiar with, uh, thank you, Patrick, are familiar with soil stabilized bricks, um, especially in uh, Western Kenya and some of the coast. Um, if you actually go to our LinkedIn page on 14 Trees on LinkedIn, you see an excellent video showing the impact of Durabricks in Malawi. We do a lot of low income houses in Malawi using Durabrick and it has a huge environmental impact as well. So we're very proud of that project. Um, and in Kenya, we work with Bamburi, of course, a leading cement provider in Kenya to develop 14 Trees homes where we work with private developers, uh, some corporatives, but mainly SACOs to deliver what we call micro mass housing. So the 50 to 100 unit houses. Go to the next page, please. So let me discuss the benefits of a turnkey projects and why SACOs should consider turnkey projects for members. Firstly, for their members, um, there are some uh, benefits to go through. Um, first of all, idle land generates no monthly income, while rental income provides regular income, which is it can be crucial, especially in these times where COVID-19 has such an impact on job losses. Rental income could be precious income. We see a lot of SACOs who subdivide land into quarter and one eight acres, and the member buys that land, but it's it's a real, it's non-returning asset. Um, while a house can provide rental income, which has uh, cash flow benefits. Um, also, when you look at the availability of affordable uh, availability of prime land at affordable prices is now very difficult to find. In many ways, that market is somewhat saturated. The times where we could find 10 acres uh, just off the road in Rongai, subdivide it and make a handsome profit by subdividing is now harder and harder. And what we're finding is that the land is now further from services such as power, water and sewage, and making DIY construction more costly. Um, the other point, um, uh, about building a single unit away from services that it provides a significant security issue both during construction and post construction. So if you're a long way from services or a long way from the highway building, there's obviously a risk of theft. And also once the house is finished, you are often left exposed and you're, you're lacking the, the benefits of a community. Uh, you're also often further away from public transport uh, uh, availability. Uh, finally, uh, land banking creates a resale challenge and I'm Irish from birth. I came to Kenya 12 years ago, but land banking was certainly an issue that we experienced in Ireland where um, 
Now, a lot of SACOs are sold a quarter and one acre plots, and a lot of indi individuals own these plots, but it's very difficult to resell them because everyone owns plots. And there's not a resale market, which is difficult when it comes to re releasing equity on land. So it's difficult to say to Patrick, I want to release equity to fund education for a one eighth acre plot of land three kilometers off the main road because Patrick's issue is how does he release um, funds for, if he uses that uh, land as security. Um, and for the SACOs, what are the benefits of a turnkey project for SACO? Um, OK, so a completed house offers better collateral for SACOs, similar to uh, Patrick's issue here in the, in the mortgage centre. Uh, if you have a house, it's easier for SACO to liquidate that asset rather than a one eighth uh, acre of land a long way from anywhere. Um, there's a better return on SACO funds. Let me explain that. Uh, traditionally, if SACOs buy 10 acres and subdivide it, they add a margin, so that's margin one. If you add a contract, a partner to develop a turnkey housing development, you can also add a margin onto the house. And 10% of 4 million is more than 10% of 400,000. So you, there's an opportunity for the SACO to generate a lot more income. income. Margin one plus margin two is more cash for the SACO. And finally, more members. If you have a SACO for a reputation for delivering uh, a good investment in a good house, a good uh, first time property for homeowners, you will undoubtedly generate more uh, members to join your SACO. OK, so tips for a turnkey project and how to make it a sec success. Um, first, just find a reliable partner. Uh, someone who's willing to put cash in the game, skin in the game, i.e. cash. It's something Chris has, has told us as a partner that he wants to see cash in the game. And what this uh, avoids is a scenario that we've seen quite a lot in Kenya is where someone comes, buys land, gets into a joint venture with a landowner. He doesn't put any cash in. He takes the cash to develop the unit. And what ultimately happens is that cash goes into land cruisers here, into property there. And um, if you've got a, a reliable partner, keyword reliable partner who is willing to put cash in, this, in the game, then you know you've got a partnership. Um, get your bank involved. Again, another crucial aspect for a turnkey. And, and co-op are an ideal partner for this. Uh, they have plenty of services for a turnkey solution. Uh, you don't give your offtake money straight to the developer. You don't give him access to the cookie jar. Make sure you work with the bank and put the cash into an escrow account. So that cash is managed on delivery of the project. So you have security that your money is going to how you want it to be used. Uh, know what your members want. I'm sure many of you on the line have already carried out a survey, but it's important to know what your members want and what you're looking for. Um, if you can be involved in the pre-construction design phase, so you're not buying a readily built house that doesn't suit your members' needs, get, get involved in the start. Um, don't be too ambitious. Uh, th this is a key point. Uh, Chris said at, at the very opening, uh, um, now is a stage where you sell uh, units off plan, don't build and sell. And if you're going to build units off plan, it's, it's better to do small, fast, replicable projects. Um, micro mass, let's not try and sell 1,000 off takers. Let's try and find 100 off takers and do a project quickly and then move on and do the next one. Another key point is affordable housing can only be achieved by moderating profit expectations, not by compromising the build quality. The idea is not to build as cheap as possible and to make huge margins, it's to give the homeowner a very value added product and um, so build quality. So a quick look at 14 trees offer. Uh, and what we offer to SACOs with Co-op Bank. Next slide, please. I, I think my slides are too heavy on click buttons, which is what's causing the issue. Um, so yeah, you see there's various stages for our negotiation with, with SACOs. First of all, we sit with the SACO and we agree what are the objectives of the SACO, including where the plot is located, what are the price points you're looking to achieve, and what kind of margin the SACO is looking to achieve, or what kind of return on investment the SACO is looking to achieve in the project. We then deliver a financial model that shows clearly who's making money and where. Uh, we then sign an MOU, and 14 Trees provides a marketing material, master plan, and designs. 
that allows us to go to the second stage where SACOs look for off takers for that project. Um, and once we've got off takers and we're, we're talking micro mass of 50 to 100 off takers um, and we identify which SACO members qualify for a mortgage through co-op bank or through the SACO or a cash buyer, then we go to the project finance and they agree to finance the project. Um, 14 trees receive the approval from Co-op Bank to proceed. Very key point, all funds are secured in an escrow account managed by the bank. So they are in escrow. Deliver against project plan, then Co-op Bank release the funds. Um, next stage is a 14 trees deliver, delivers complete a project within agreed timeline, again supervised by the bank. Our approach to building or construction affordable housing is to do a year and um, turnkey, everything involved, which gives great visibility to the bank and to the SACO that they're getting what they wanted in good time. And then we deliver completed houses to the pre-qualified SACO members. So it's it's quite a end-to-end -end solution. Um, from the green field, finally to handing over. And like I said, our, our objective is to do this transparently and quickly so everyone can for. Do I have another slide? I don't think so. Maybe you can go back to the, um, the master plan and the, the, the previous slide so we can give people a, a look at what we're offering. Can we go back to the previous slide? OK, so uh, there, unfortunately there's a lot. Is, uh, uh, is a way to deliver the project that achieves the members, um, the members' objectives to to own a home, own a home, um, and also the SAC, the SACO's return objectives of delivering um, a project to their members. Um, and here's my one final slide. Just a reminder of some of the turnkey offer, a turnkey offer that meets your members' needs. Um, like I said, 14 trees works with SACOs from the green field to the final uh, part. It's very end to end. It's very specific to what the SACO wants to achieve. Um, so it's a very succinct end to end proposal. Uh, we're flexible. We offer three different units um, from a 60, uh, 66 square meter two bedroom, uh, an 83 square meter uh, three bedroom, or a 110 square meter ten house. All different. Uh, price points, but we're very much a an affordable housing developer. We, we don't look at the six million plus opportunity. We, we're very much look to offer units within the government affordable housing units, so below four million shillings. And that's very much our proposal. Um, finance, we we use a, a blend of international finance, obviously through our shareholders. We get access to excellent rates on international project finance, but also with Co-op Bank here, we're very supportive of of uh, uh, delivering projects for SACOs who give us excellent um, uh, project finance rates. And I think the most critical point and the critical offer the 14 Trees offers is, is reliability. And um, we are uh, the world's largest building material pr provider in the far wholesome 22 million, 22 billion pound uh, enterprise, 70,000 employees in 70 countries around the world. And the CDC group, which is essentially the UK government owned by Her Majesty the Queen. So we're two ver very reliable partners. I don't mean to say it flippantly, but we're not going to run away with your money. We're a trusted partner to deliver projects for, for your members. Um, 
So I hope that wasn't too fast for everyone. Chris, Patrick, that's, that's where I'll leave it. OK, thank you. Thank you, Kwong. I think it was quite insightful because yours, your topic speaks um, is an addition to what uh, uh, Alex took us through. And I think that gives us a reason to see how best we can leverage on uh, coming together uh, so that we can have our members uh, have access to units and affordable units at that. I think that in line with the kind of questions that have come through, I think time is ripe for us to get into the question and answer sessions because I believe the questions that we are seeing, the questions that have come through are very relevant uh, to the topic for the day. And at this point in time, I'll want to request uh, the four panelists who will be called Alex, uh, Chris Shege and Mariciano Makila to take uh, their positions because we have a few questions that I would want us uh, I would want us to uh, to respond to. But even as we do that, I want to request our viewers to keep uh, to keep uh, engaging us. Please leave your chats. Uh, we will be ready. We are ready to respond to them. So if you can keep them coming, uh, this is the point when we we'll want to start addressing those questions. And uh, the first question uh, that I would want us to tackle uh, is actually addressed to the first uh, to the last speaker uh, who is called. And um, the, the speaker is actually asking, he didn't leave a name, uh, but I believe we'll be able to still make an impact there. Uh, the, cl the client is asking, who would take charge of obtaining the project plans, drawings, and necessary approvals for a proposed project? So, Colm, if you could address that, I think uh, quite a number of uh, our listeners would be keen to know who would be in charge of procuring the approvals for the project. Colm? Uh, thanks, Patrick. Yes, the question. Um, I mean, it's captured within Turn Key from the green plot of land to turning the key. 14 trees looks after everything. So your answer is 14 trees. We uh, project manage the the project from start to finish. So everything from um, an agreement between ourselves, the Saco Co-op Bank, and um, to delivering the, the keys to turn the door to move into your house. Everything is is included, so it's one contracted price, which is why, like Chris was saying, it's a very clean end-to-end -end solution, um, and it's it's quite uh, as, assuming you pick the right partner, a reliable partner. It's quite um, hassle-free for the SACO. We know the construction market better than you do, and you know your customers in the SACO market better than we do. We would never attempt to run a SACO, nor should the SACO attempt to do construction. Um, so yeah, I, I think that answers the question. It's a good question. Okay, thank you, thank you, Colm. I think in essence, what that means is that the moment you sign a contract, I get everything done. At the end of it all, I get keys to the unit and I move on with the family, right? Correct. Thank you, thank you, Colm. Uh, I think we'll want to take on a second question. And uh, Colm, you could also take this one as well, uh, because we have another client uh, who is also asking, whether we have any completed projects or any projects you've handled uh, under the same arrangement. Colm, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, not yet in Kenya. 14 Trees was established in 2016 in Malawi and we moved to Kenya in April of 2019. So we were busy last year meeting a lot of SACOs and I probably met some of the people online. Uh, and we were uh, just about to uh, break ground on a project in March of this year when uh, COVID-19 came along and scuppered our plans and many other plans around the world. Um, so now recently, and I think this event is a sign of, of things to come, the market is is building up towards um, trying to start business again. So we hope to have a big yes to that question in Kenya, the start of next year. Um, we have our uh, done projects in Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Ivory Coast, so we, we do have experience doing it in other countries. OK, thank you. Thank you, Colm, for the swift response to that. I think what that means is that we have a point of reference. If anybody is willing to take up a, a project, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a similar project or projects that have been done, and one would be able to see uh, what has been done uh, in other areas. The next question, I think there's a question that has also just come in, uh, would be 
to the next to the first speaker who was Alex and uh, the question that I want him to, re to respond to is a question from Rehab. Rehab is calling from is actually giving his uh, reference as Mogotio. Maybe Alex you could respond to this. Uh, what is the role of circles in ensuring that the loans advanced to the circles are paid back to the bank? Because what we were told is that the bank has a critical role of also availing financing. So Alex, if you could respond to this, uh, if you could respond to what Rehab is asking, what is the role of the bank? What is the role of the circles in ensuring that the loan advanced to the circle is paid back to the bank? Alex, would kindly request you take that one. Okay. My audible, Patrick? Yes, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. Thank you. Me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, uh, our listeners. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to re respond to the question from Hub, Rahab on uh, why circles, why circles have play a very important role when uh, it comes to ensuring that uh, money advanced to them by the banks uh, is paid back. One of the things about the principles of circles is that there is a bond. There is a there is a common bond. There is a there is a relationship between the circle and the member. So the, the circle knows the member better than the bank. So in terms of uh, managing, in terms of uh, monitoring, the circle is able to play, to play a, a better role, a better role of monitoring uh, its members than the bank could. So uh, the, the circle has a role of monitoring and ensuring that uh, the members are working together. There's also the issue of the guarantorship, whereby a member, uh, when a member borrows is guaranteed by several other members. That is one of the uh, strategies that is available in the bank, but is available within the circle of, of uh, structure. This ensures that uh, all loans that are advanced uh, to any member, then there is a guarantor, one or two or three, depending on the bylaws of the circle, uh, then uh, they will be able to recover from the guarantor. It's a principle that works because uh, Every member is committed to ensure that they do not let down the other members. The other thing, critical thing for circles in terms of repaying their loans is the ability to mobilize very quickly and mobilize more resources. So the circles are able to, uh, to, to even change, open their bond, look for new members uh, and mobilize uh, very quickly, uh, cheap, cheap, cheap deposits from their members. With all that, uh, we, as a bank, we are more confident uh, when engaging with the circle directly because we are sure that uh, uh, there is a second level mechanism of uh, um, of securing this facility through the circle structure. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you, Alex. I, I think that is also very clear, uh, but I'll still encourage our our viewers to keep posting their questions. And I can see there are more questions which are coming in. Uh, some are addressed to 14 trees. I can see Mark from Ukabuzi Housing is asking a question. Probably this was just before Colm uh, talked about uh, the model and uh, the other projects which have been completed. Uh, I think uh, in another five or so minutes, we'll also hear from Colm with regard to with regard to the next question. So Colm, you'll get ready. And but once we hear from Chris, because Chris, there's also another question which is coming in, and I would want you to handle this. There's a client, there's an anonymous client who is asking, how does the bank disburse the funds? Is it all at once or would it be in stages for a concept uh, based on what 14 trees is offering? So Chris, you could take that as we also prepare to hear from Colm on the next question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think this is one of the 
concept around the whole project and the financing model that was adapted for the word go. I think that comes in handy in terms of determining what would work well for a project. It must be always remembered that uh, liquidity in a project is very critical and without liquidity in a project, chances are that you get delay in payment, delay in finishing the project on time and in most cases that escalates the cost of the project. So these are what we call now the preliminary project evaluation. How will we disburse? But all options are open as long as the whole team are in agreement who is to take care of, who, I mean, what to take care of uh, in, in the various scenarios for financing. I don't know whether that Patrick uh, does give an answer. I think that's a valid response because it is bang on what the client was asking, whether the funds would be during construction or after construction. Uh, but feel free, uh, you didn't leave your name, but uh, if if you feel you do want more clarification, please feel free to get uh, back to us. Now, the other question, even as we prepare Colm to come in, uh, I think this one will be handled by Mariciano Makila. And uh, the question to Mariciano Makila, is actually around uh, ordinary construction because this client is asking about i think this is charles charles from sika charles is asking uh, what are the documents that you would require for a normal mortgage appraisal for a normal construction mortgage appraisal mariciano please i'll request that you take that one even as we prepare to hear from from colm on the next question thank you makila um Thank you, Patrick, uh, and thank you, our listeners, for joining us today. So in case you come uh, to Cooperative Bank and uh, you want to do a construction, the basic documents that we will uh, request from you uh, include what we call approved drawings. Uh, these are drawings that you go to your local county and you get them approved. Uh, we have ones we call uh, structural drawings and we also have uh, architectural drawings. So we will request you to give us that. Uh, secondly, we will request you to give a document called a bill of quantity. This is a document that is uh, drawn by a professional called a quantity surveyor. And basically it estimates uh, the project and uh, how much it will cost for you to put up that project. So that is a bill of quantity. Thirdly, we will request you to, to give us a, what we call professionals profile. And uh, these are actually people like the architect, uh, the quantity surveyor uh, and uh, engineers. We have electrical engineers, we have mechanical, but depending on the scope of your project, we will ask you for either one or all of them. So it will depend. Uh, we will also ask you for other documents uh, like NCA compliance, uh, NEMA approvals. But uh, listen, uh, it will also depend on the type of project that you are requesting for. But basically, uh, for construction, those are the approval documents that we will request from you. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Makila. Thank you for that response. Uh, Charles from Thika, I hope that responds uh, to your question, uh, but feel free to get in touch with us uh, should you feel you'd want more clarification with regard to construction facilities. Now the next question, uh, this one will actually go to Paul, and it's from Mark from Ukaguzi Housing. And this question, I would rather we phrase it in two ways because Mark is asking, is if a society owns land, does the value of the land uh, add as input. I presume the question is if the society owns land, 
does the value of the land count as equity contribution into the project? Uh, maybe you could respond to that first, as, we, as, as uh, even as we prepare to ask the second one. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. Yes, it does. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if the screen is really showing. Sure, if you brought that mark answer to your question is yes. Land can be introduced as equity contribution. We will present a financial model showing all the inputs and valuations to get to the end user price, showing um, who makes money where and what the product is that the end user, your member, is, is purchasing. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I think uh, that responds to your query, Mark. Mark from Kaguzi Housing, but feel free to reach out and we'll be able to clarify that uh, should you feel you'd want more input. Call, you might want to take a second, a last question here from an anonymous attendee who is asking, what is the minimum number of units that you would consider uh, to undertake a turnkey project? Um, really the minimum we're looking at is um, 40 units is probably, 40 to 50, 50 units is probably the minimum we, we'd look to do. Um, but I think what you know what Patrick just said. I mean, for any other questions, I think speak to Co-op Bank, and we can have a conversation uh, over Zoom separately to discuss the objectives of the SACO. We're, we're very flexible in what we want to deliver. The, the fewer units you achieve, it's difficult to achieve an uptake price, and that's within the government's affordable range, um, which is why we look at 40, 50 units as a minimum, approximately two to three acres. Thank you, Paul. I think uh, that is also quite uh, quite uh, exhaustive. I think we've responded to those questions, but we'll still encourage all our attendees to keep posting more questions. If you feel something is not clear, we'll actually get hold of all the panelists uh, to, to to make sure that to be sure that we are responding to all the questions uh, that you're asking. Now, the other question, I think this is more this this should be a member of a society because. Is asking about the circles, and I would request Alex uh, to respond to this question, even as we prepare Chris to respond to the last question. Uh, so, Alex is a client who is asking, what are the other benefits that would accrue uh, from partnering with the bank? I presume it's from a cooperative's perspective. Are there any other opportunities that one would leverage with the bank uh, for the benefit of both parties? Alex? Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh... In terms of partnering with the SACO, the bank has uh, several areas where we can partner with the SACO. And one of our strongest uh, things we do here in the bank is, uh, is our consultancy services. Our consultancy services. We, one of, we have one of the most versatile consultancy services uh, uh, team in, in the country, which is focused on cooperative. And uh, some of the things we do for you as a, as a cooperative society, our uh, operational manuals we support you in uh, doing your operational manuals, HR manuals, compliance manuals, all those manuals we can be able to do. We can also do what we call business operation review, uh, feasibility studies for your project. We can do a market research for your project. We'll be able to offer advisory services, especially one of the things that is uh, we have found as a need, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of gap when uh, cooperative societies are acquiring land. That process of acquiring land is something we, we, we can support you in, even in, uh, in doing a due diligence and even in ensuring that you have followed the proper processes that are laid down. So in terms of uh, partnering with the bank, we, we, we have plenty to, to offer 
and we would want to encourage you to come over and uh, discuss with us. We'll be able, we are ready, we are more than willing to support any cooperative society in any part of this country uh, to excel. So uh, uh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for elaborating on that. Just to comment, there's somebody who's actually clarified. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of George Dumbu. Uh, your question, uh, allow us to respond to that privately. Uh, we also have uh, a gentleman by the name of Sam. Sam, I believe, is from uh, Amref Housing. We'll also get back to you privately because that's more of a personal issue. Um, so the last question, which uh, we'd want Chris Shege to respond to, is with regard to this to repayment for the for the mortgage and there's a client here who's not left a name and is actually asking what will he be required to pay back to the bank during the construction period so i think in other words what he's asking is are there any payments that are supposed to be made to the bank uh, for a loan uh, during the construction period chris thank you very much uh, We are doing construction, and that's how the margin is uh, individual construction or even uh, society construction. Uh, you can apply for what we call a moratorium. A moratorium defers the the moratorium does defer the the, the, the facility, especially the capital payment, which will be paid after 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 completion of the project. So what is actually paid is interest alone. So uh, what is there in option is again for interest, depending on the size of the project, you can have a moratorium period of about six months, eight months, 12 months, depending on the size of the project and when you finish. This is supposed to help you to start repaying when already you put the property into use. So I think that's one of the facilities that's available. So whenever you go in and ask for a construction facility, please remember to also present the documents that are indicating when you are going to start your project, when you want to end your project, and what time you think that you want to be assisted in terms of having a moratorium. That's a critical component of construction. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for responding to that. I think it's pretty clear on what one needs to have in mind, or rather prepare himself in terms of the payments. And again, depending on the model you're taking, because as uh, elaborated earlier by Colm and Chris, the this but the payments back to the bank if you're taking a turnkey if you're taking the turnkey approach would also be different ladies and gentlemen i would want to thank you and i would want to bring this question and answer session to the end now uh, because we are pressed for time considering we had made a promise to end the session at 12 30. but at this point i would want to thank you for the interactive session we've had and the fact that you've posed very interesting questions uh, the chat is still open you can still uh, send more questions to us and we will be ready to respond to the same or better still you can reach us uh, through the property portal or goodhome.co.ke or better still call us on 0711-049-739 or 0711-049-696 or you can also reach us on 0711-049-266 feel free to reach us and we'll be more than glad to get back to you. And at this point in time, I want to call on to Chris uh, to give us the closing remarks, but I'll still insist our lines are open. You can reach us for more information with regard to what we are discussing. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Patrick, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, our very variable presenters, Alex Monty and uh, Carl Murray. Thank you. Very insightful topics that you've brought in today that have really told us more about how to be able to undertake through a tanky and again the role of cooperatives in the whole sector. I think I want to thank the whole team that was behind the whole presentation. Our panelists, I think thank you very much. Our guests, wherever you are and our audience, I think we truly want to appreciate uh, on, on our behalf and that uh, of Cooperative Bank. I think we want to thank you for taking time. Very again insightful questions, and I think we 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 are, we are we are clear that um, we have customers there. They have the needs, and for us now is to connect and be able to so solve those needs. I think on on our part, I think we can only say thank you very much. Uh, this is our second symposium from our opening of Friday of the hub. 
and the symposiums are continuing each and every day and they'll be there again tomorrow. Tomorrow again from 11 o'clock to 12.30, there'll be a symposium and uh, the people to prepare tomorrow are uh, the contractors and developers. So if you are a contractor out there, if you are a developer out there and you are wondering how to partner with us to have the affordable housing, I think tomorrow is your day. So please call, call on you that uh, you join us tomorrow. There'll be very good presentations of how you can do it. And we have a panel of experts that will sit through and reason. With that, uh, I think allow me to bring this session to an end. And uh, as is our tradition, uh, we'll ask uh, one of us to close with a word of prayer. But again, on our behalf and the team that was behind the, the symposium, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And God bless you. So purity, go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Thank you. Okay, let us uh, bow down for a word of prayer. We thank you, dear Lord, for in this session, in the beginning, we asked you that you may guide us, that you may give us insightful uh, messages throughout the session. And we come before you thanking you because you have done as we requested. And we want to praise you and to honor your holy name. We pray as we continue with the sessions throughout the week, you're going to continue giving us wisdom, continue giving us knowledge, bless our customers, bless our staff, continue giving us health, even as we proceed so that we may be able to help our customers attain more and more. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, thank you. Thank you much. Amen. Thank you. So you will continue seeing the properties as you interact through the chat. Thank you very much. and God bless you. <laughs>
the Good Home Mortgage Property Hub is officially open. Mortgage Property Hub is officially open.
the Good Home Mortgage Property Hub is officially open. 